Hello, it's Simone. Today I would like to share with you an updated fountain pen collection video. I have shared one in October of 2022 and I thought since I am not going to purchase any more pens in 2023 I could just sit down and share with you what my collection looks like right now. Um, I should have counted before I started this video. Uh, I have something around 40, well, this pen case is full, that's 20. This pen case is not full, that's 38. Thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, and then now I'm missing one of them. Forty-four fountain pens in my collection at the moment. Uh, I have three pens that have I have on loan from a fountain pen friend that are not included in here. They are currently in my pen case right here. Um, the reason why these pens are in here is because I am thinking, currently thinking of selling all of those. But let, and the pen that is in here, I have just retired at the end of September when I realized that there is a crack in the cap and I was aware of the crack down here in the pen body see that um, but the crack in the cap is the thing that um, worries me and I don't want to keep using it because I want to preserve it for my son and if he decides he doesn't want it that's okay too so I'm keeping that in here I think I am going in the order of how many pens I have of each brand uh, and then hope Hopefully this is not going to be the longest video, but knowing me and knowing the length of the videos that I usually share, that wouldn't surprise me at all. So the mouse, mouse pens in my collection is still occupied by Twisby, even though I have sold quite a few Twisbys in 2023 and even though I am not going to add any more. Um, I have the Twisby Eco Lilac with a, an extra fine nib. I have recently shared two videos uh, about my Twisby journey and why I'm not going to add any more Twisbys to my collection. Um, and most of these pens do not have the origi their original body. I was able to replace all of them with Twisby Eco T bodies like this one. This is a regular Eco, um, but the body is an Eco T. This one is a 1.1 stub. This one was gifted to me by my friend Ramona. These three were the first three Twisbees that I purchased and also the first three Twisbees or the first three fountain pens when I started diving into the fountain pen hobby. Um, this one has a Nemocene extra fine nib on here. And the same goes for this one. There's also a, an extra fine nib on this one. Also Nemocene. Nemocene. Um, so I have five to be Ecos. This one is the white. This one is the yellow green. This one is another Eco T in the mint blue, the clear. And then I did purchase the um, Twisby Mini in black. And I really love this body, the size of the pen. It's perfect as an everyday carry for me. Um, the nib that is on here is a custom grind nib that was ground by Kirk Spear of Pen Realm. 
and it is a reverse architect nib. I love using this pen in my weekly creative journal where I uh, sketch and write. So I like using a document or pigmented ink in this pen. Uh, and that's what I'm trying in these two pens as well with different colors. This is the Twisby Mini AL Grape. Uh, this one has a broad nib on there right now. I do have replacement nibs for the Twisby Mini in uh, fine, medium and extra fine, I think. Um, that I can swap out here and because I don't enjoy the aluminum grip I swapped I just swapped the grip section of one of those replacement nibs so that's my Twisby pens I am keeping those currently in order to be able to house inks that are shimmer that I'm not so sure about if they are staining inks, uh, but I have noticed a decline in me gravitating towards these pens. So I am, I might be tempted to sell even more of these Twisbees. And then let's just move on to these sailors. I do have two more on loan. And so I have the whole family at the moment. I have a Twisby, uh, not Twisby, a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. This is the Autumn Sky. This one was gifted to me by a viewer. She absolutely despised the nib. And so she told me that I could keep the pen um, after she sent it over and had me write with it. It was extremely scratchy, very, very dry. Uh, and so I took it to the San Francisco Pen Show with me and had Kirk Spear, again, of Pen Realm, um, tune and smooth it. He made it much better for me. So that's lovely. Um, I'm not normally someone who gravitates towards these smaller pens. This one is almost the size of this Twisby Mini in the pocket, basically a pocket pen. Um, I'm, I don't enjoy the narrow grip sections, but for some reason I do, I can write with this. And so I was um, on a whim, I purchased this one just recently. This is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Another autumn, but this is the autumn drizzle in also Proger Slim. Uh, both of these have medium fine nibs. The difference between both of those pens is that this one is a 14K and this one is a 21K nib. And I was hoping, and it's also a two tone nib. I was hoping for more bounce, like I am experienced experiencing with the hoops sorry uh, with the medium fine nib of the 21k on this pen but the really quick experiment and research that wasn't very scientific showed that it must be the nib size that makes this bouncy and not the gold um, because these both feel very very similar um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep both of those pens and if or even if I'm going to keep any of those pens because they're on the smaller side. So we will see about that. Um, I have started a no spend until the end of the year to give myself also, among other things, the opportunity to not be distracted by new things coming in, but to be able to actually do some research and experience the pens that I have in my collection in order to determine their value and their place. Um, 
value i'm meaning how is this pen different from another pen what makes it special why is it staying in my collection what what is their justification to be in this pen case um that does not necessarily mean that a pen needs to be needs to have a special nib i can just keep a pen because i love the way it looks and maybe it's not the most comfortable pen but it's still a pen that justifies being in my collection so i'm not uh, too rigorous with these but I still really want to ask the question what makes this pen special why is it here um, do I have do I experience the same over and over again that's why I'm thinking about maybe letting go even more of these Twisby Egos now that they're repaired and almost as new I could totally do that but so I have these two that are mine the ones that i have on loan are the pens that are currently more interesting to me so maybe there will be some kind of swaparoo um yeah this is my only i think hand turned pen i think franklin christoph machines their pens uh, this is a Walltown Pens Watts model with the, a turned pen company blank called Sebastian. I call this the Alicorn Poop. And I have to say that this chunker of a pen is one of the most comfortable pens in my whole collection. Um, I'm generally not drawn to these uh, acrylics uh, with the swirls um, and I'm always surprised when I actually do like one like this. So yeah, I'm going to move on to here. There is another fountain pen brand where I have more than just one pen, but I'm just going to through this pen case. So these two pens I don't even have on my fountain pen companion pen list because I have one of them was a gift as well. And the other one I have had since I was a teenager and I have not inked either one of those pens since I can't even remember. Um, so I am having them here because I'm unsure of what exactly I want to do with those pens. They both have uh, stub nibs. I do have other nibs. I, I mean, you know, I could maybe use an extra fine nib on this and put a document ink in here and see how that works and just leave it on my desk for sketching or so. I'm not opposed uh, to keep those pens, but I, I feel like I'm not see I'm not seeing myself using these pens in my currently inked rotations. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing with them, but they're here for storage purposes and they're part of the Lamy family. These two both are Lamy AL, AL, AL Sports or Al Sport not even sure. This one is the bronze. I got, was gifted this pen um, at the beginning of 2023 and then I purchased this one in the summer from Atlas Stationers because I have noticed that I really enjoy using this all-star and so I just added one more for the variety color purposes. This one these two definitely if i'm going by what makes this pen special uh yeah these are both replaceable this one is the yellow lamy safari is by far the oldest pen in my collection i am thinking of retiring this one for the same reason as i did the um, pelicano junior 
uh, there are scratches on here I I don't want to this to break I don't assume it's going to break but I'm not really drawn to using this pen as much as I'm drawn to these and the only reason I keep this around is for sentimental reasons and then lastly this is my Lamy 2000. I purchased this uh, during Black Friday of 2022. It's the Black Macrolon. I purchased it with a an extra fine nib. And even though I really, I liked it okay, it was wet, it wrote okay. Uh, I was never 100% in love with it until I got the chance to try a fine nib um, and then I was completely in love. I since was able to purchase this nib, the fine nib that is on here right now and I actually sold the extra fine nib and I think all parties involved are pretty happy with that deal. Now these are two standalone pens. I don't have any other pens by these makers. This one is a Gravitas pen. It's a pocket pen made from Delrin material. It posts. It can hold a number six nib. I purchased this uh, pen body without a nib and it just holds, currently holds a spare Estabrook nib that I have laying around. I have used this once during 30 inks 30 days. Um, it was kind of slippery right here. And I, again, will be conducting some more using experiments, how I feel about this pen. Um, so there are some pens in this collection for sure that I do need to analyze, experiment with some more before I can make a decision that this stays in my collection. And even if I make the decision tomorrow that this will stay, maybe in a year or so, I think differently and then I will sell, sell it. None of these pens, well, that is not 100% true. This one, for instance, will stay forever. 98% um, of the pens that I have in my current fountain pen collection are pens that would be that I would be able and willing to sell in order to maybe buy something else. This pen was a gift that I received last year. So 2022 in sometime in the summer, um, the person who sent this to me uh, did not enjoy the double broad nib um, and it was scratchy. So I was able to try and smooth it a tiny bit and I have sold all of my Caveco sports since then. I had a, an AL sport, I had multiple Caveco regular sport, and uh, the only reason why I'm keeping this is because it's a double broad nib. But in general, the Caveco sport is not a pen that I am gravitated towards using. And you might say, well, this pen is exactly the same as this one. Yes and no. Uh, they might be the similar size, but if you look at the grip section, um, that's where you can find, can see the difference. The, the other reason um, why I'm Basically, de-stashing many of the pens with the smaller nibs is because I have learned this year that I really enjoy number six size nibs. And so I'm not, unless the pen is super special, I'm not, I'm not too attached to pens with the smaller nibs. So that's this pen case. This one is a pen case that I purchased from Amazon. It does a great job at holding all of the pens that I'm currently not using. And it's by far 
more affordable than the Gallon Leather um, 20 pen case that I have purchased in, I think, the beginning of 2022. It was a birthday present and I did not think that I would fill this, but actually uh, I have. So here is the, ha, let's put it this way, the more sparkly pens, the more colorful pens. Uh, I'm going to start down here with my pe uh, Pilot collection. This is a Pilot E95S with a medium nib that was tuned at the San Francisco Pen Show by Kirk Spear. I had originally thought of selling this pen because I, maybe I had a dud, but this pen was, the nib was super dry in the app strokes, especially it sometimes it, it was basically stopping the writing until you would write down strokes. And so um, I'm not, set on keeping this pen in my collection at the moment but i'm definitely going to try it a little more after the tuning he spent most of the time on this specific nib uh, because it was just so difficult to seem to be tuned this one is the pilot custom 74 this was my one well no this was my first gold nib pen um, it has the smaller nib size and as I said before I don't necessarily enjoy or am not necessarily drawn to the smaller nibs but this one is just so amazing it also has some sentimental value um, that this is one of those I don't think I will ever sell or get rid of just because it it, it was my very first a gold nib pen and um, this is definitely not something that you should do because it loses its warranty I was able to easily remove the nib and feed from from this uh, section um, by just slowly turning the section and I have been using this pen for shimmer inks and it's been amazing and so yeah this is, has been my go-to shimmer pen even even when I'm when I'm between the choice do I put this ink in a Twisby do I put this ink in a in the custom 74 I am more likely to to choose this one and then again, another, this is a very affordable pen option. This is the Pilot Kakuno or Kakuno. This is the Papa um, model. It has a tie and a mustache on the nib. It has a fine nib. Um, I hadn't really used this pen this year. Uh, I only inked it twice, but every time I inked it, I was just so blown away by the fine line that it produces that I decided this definitely has a place in my collection, even among these expensive pens. This is the Pilot Custom 70, uh, Pilot Custom 823 in the Amber model. This was a gift from a viewer. It has my favorite nib size, which is medium and Again, besides the fact that it was a gift and I don't, I do feel comfortable selling gifts, but I just don't feel comfortable selling this pen because every time I use it, I feel like I'm coming home. Um, if I had to get rid of all of my pens, it, I would get rid of all of them besides this, even the ones with sentimental value um, because this just feels comfortable every time I use it no matter my mood no matter no matter anything uh, then last pilot pen is this pilot vanishing point 
in deep yellow. Uh, this was, I think, the pen where I learned that I need to read the product description very, very carefully. Um, it, if you check, at the time that I purchased this pen, it was around 80 US dollars on Amazon and I purchased mine for a hundred. Uh, thinking I purchased a gold nib pen until a viewer uh, helped me clarify that that was not the case, that it was a steel nibbed pen. Um, I had a lot of trouble, trouble with this pen and I just fell or fell in love with this pen and the way it feels in my hand over the summer. Um, I, I was on the fence if I was going to keep this or not. Uh, it, during the San Francisco Pen Show 2022, so over a year ago now, I upgraded this pen to a... Or, uh, I upgraded by purchasing a gold nib unit. And once I put wet inks in this pen. I'm really, really enjoying the bouncy nib. There is definitely something to this nib that makes it unique. Um, and I just recently in September purchased this and I am going to call this a vintage fountain pen. It might be from then. All right, let's see if we can continue with this. I have in September, I purchased this pen on a whim, similarly to um, the Autumn Drizzle fountain pen. <laughs> However, this is much more, I talked about that in the video. This, for some reason, just spoke to me. And so I actually didn't think twice. I had the budget and so I just went ahead and purchased it from Facebook Marketplace. This pen is from around 1997. On the, on the nib unit, it says um, 97. I don't re remember the month, um, but these pens were these vanishing points. And this is a faceted model right here in Hunter Green. Um, I did not say that this one has a medium nib, this one has a medium nib as well. Um, it was st then branded Namiki. And the nib unit uh, compared to the 18 karat nib unit of the Pilot Vanishing Point as it comes today. If you purchase this pen with a gold nib, this one came with a 14K gold nib. So yeah, I, if we're talking about this pen stays in my collection forever, this one, I can totally say that I will never ever get rid of this. I'm not sure about this one. If maybe someone, you know, people watch videos and they offered me so much money, I might consider selling it. But at the moment, it is just so lovely. I enjoy the way this feels. It is on the narrower, narrower side, but, but uh, yeah, still very, very stunning. And I love having the pre is that the right word, of this pen in my collection as well. Next up, we're moving on to Benu, and as you can see, I have three of the same pen model, and then one other one. I normally don't keep this one in a pen loop because it's just so big and chunky. All three of those are Euphoria models by Benu. Um, it's just the most comfortable model that I have tested from them so far that has a number six nib. Um, this is the first one that I purchased. I technically, I purchased it in 2022, but I bought this as my birthday pen for February, 2023. 
And so I started using it then. Uh, and then in very quick succession, I this is the Jazz. I bought it with a fine nib, but as with the Twisbees, I also went ahead and um, purchased a spare broad nib. So now I have fine, medium and broad of those nibs and I can do swap rows as, as needed. Um, these are Schmidt nibs, so they will not fit on pens that take Yovo nibs. If you unscrew the nib unit and want to, you can if you take the whole thing apart, but that's not my thing. I don't enjoy doing that. I always feel like I'm breaking things. So I tend to just completely unscrew the unit. This one um, has a black grip section and a black band. And I know that there's many people out there who do not enjoy or do not like the look of these. I got this for a really great deal. I think during Fountain Pen Day, maybe during Black Friday uh, from Atlas. And so I had already looked at all of the Benu pens and knew that this was the model I would get. And then they had it at a great sale price. So I just went for it. And I feel like among most of the models with the black band, this one is the least um, obvious. And so I, I like it. I also, if I would sell a pen from these three, probably most likely be this one. This is a Goulet exclusive Euphoria model from called Confetti Milkshake. Um, this one has a medium nib. I really like the color blocking that is going on here with the nib, the section, uh, the section, the band, the cap band, and then here, this part that actually technically still belongs to the body. Um, yeah, I, I like the confettis, how they are distributed on this pen. I was a bit taken back by the fact how the clear, hope, I hope you can see this, how the clear and the milky uh, color of the acrylic interact with each other just looks weird to me. You can see that here as well. And I, I understand this is how you can actually see the confetti in the pen. Um, so if I was going to sell the, any of those Euphoria models, I would probably sell this one. And then I also got the Atlas exclusive uh, Euphoria model called Gold Coast. I think this is my favorite of all three of those. It's just so stunning with the gold brown down here and then all the fleckers and such up here. And it has this pearlescent, pearlescence going on right here. And then it moves up into the dark blue on the cap. I am just stunned. I purchased both of those with medium nibs. I do have the spare broad, so I can have, if I wanted to, I can have a fine, medium and broad. And I, I really like having that option. Um, and then in May, end of May, I received this Benu Ambrosia Brown Orchid from Benu. I had reached out to them inquiring about the pen and then they offered to send it to me for review. It This pen has the smaller number five nib. Uh, it looks so gaudy. It looks so like not... It looks so like not a pen and the coolest thing about this is that it actually works so much like a full-size fountain pen and it feels super comfortable in my hand uh, that this is one of those again that I don't think that will leave my collection anytime soon. I have two nibs for this. I have a fine nib and then I bought a spare medium nib as well. Again, 
just for to create more options for the pens that I have. And then let's move on to this section here. Here is my teeny tiny uh, Esterbrook rainbow. I'm just gonna go from this side over to here. This is also a single pen that I own. This is currently the most expensive pen in my collection. This is a Schoen Design Ultim full-size fountain pen with the Schoen Design Monarch nib in medium. Um, this pen is machining perfection. I love it and I can't wait to, to use this more and get to know it more. Um, I was a bit hesitant in the beginning about the grip section, but I have come to like it a lot. And so this one definitely stays. And then I have two Franklin Christoph Model 2 um, fountain pens. I Weirdly enough, I complained quite a bit about this pen and actually thought about selling it. And then for some reason I just couldn't. And then when I went to the San Francisco pen show, I was at the Franklin Christoph table. And again, I was drawn to the same pen model, bought another one of those. This is such a fun, weird shaped fountain pen again. Um, this makes for a really deep postable cap. And I just really like that this happens. It's extremely well balanced in my hand when it's posted. I normally don't post my pens, but this one I do. Um, because these pens take Yovo number no. six nibs, they are really versatile pens. This one I got with a medium nib. Uh, for this one, I purchased a medium sig and I just love it and I interestingly enough I was drawn to this pen model that has the another swirly acrylic this time it is matte feels really warm uh, and and very um, inviting to touch and its primary manipulation which if you know me, I'm not necessarily a fan of, but for some reason, this, the, the dose of the swirly acrylic in this pen is just the perfect amount for me to be able to enjoy it. And then this is another single pen. This is the Monte Grappa Elmo. This is another pen that I purchased in 2023. I had been eyeing Sarah from Ginger PT Pens. Um, Monte Grappa Elmo, she has both the older one and then the re-release from 2023. And I just really loved it. And when I sold several of my pens that didn't work for me anymore, I noticed that I was just shy, a few dollars shy of to be able to afford this one. And so I try to sell some more pens, which I was able to do. And at the same time, I chatted with Sarah and had her send me pictures of uh, comparing comparison photos, this pen, this pen next to the uh, SD because I knew how the SD felt. Um, if I would have to choose. I feel this pen is just a tad bit more comfortable than the SD because of the weight of the barrel. There is some aluminum right back here or metal. I don't know if it's aluminum that makes this pen really weighty. Uh, you don't need to post the cap. The downside of this pen is that there is no inside cap and it doesn't dry out but it definitely ink definitely evaporates and it's also always a lot darker when you start writing with it after a couple days um, than the actual color of the ink. 
These I have accumulated also. This one was the first one, second, third, fourth. This just arrived today. This is the last pen that I purchased in 2023. That's why I'm able to film this collection video. I started out with the SD and C glass uh, that I purchased from Atlas. This one currently has a, a journaler nib that I purchased secondhand from the virtual pen show. Um, it, I purchased it originally with a medium nib. Then I accidentally was lucky surfing, surfing on Atlas when they restocked the rainforest with the Tacho nib. So I added to cart, checked out and was able to get that one. Originally my plan was to maybe uh, remove the nib, put another Astorbrook medium nib on there and resell it because this color wasn't my favorite. I have come to like it and I'm not really able to remove the nib I haven't done experiments yet, so that will come again sometime soon. And if I'm not able to remove this nib as well as this, then I will reach out to Estherbrook and see what I can do. This is the favorite, my favorite SD color. And I waited three SDs to finally get this <laughs> pen. I, I felt like I couldn't not end this year without owning one of those and so I I made this happen. This is a medium nib as well and I'm really not concerned with what nib size is on these pens because all of those here fit Yovo number no. 6 nibs and I can swip, switch and swap as I like. I have fine i don't think i have an extra fine nib but i have a fine i have specialty grinds like the journaler i have a broad nib medium i have a beautifully tuned wet fine nib and then this one is the scarlet i at the san francisco pen show i fell in love with this one so that was the next pen that i purchased this one currently houses my custom ground uh, cursive smooth italic nib again by Kirk Spear with the San Francisco uh, Pencho nib. I had some problems removing the nib. There is an unboxing video for this where I struggle quite a bit and mangle the tines. Uh, and now this custom nib is stuck on here. So I'll see what I can do about that. And then these two are my two platinum pens. This one is uh, the Platinum 3776 Century Shape of a Heart. Uh, I won this in a giveaway by Luxury Brands. This is a pen I would have never purchased myself. But I'm so, so glad I was able to add this to my collection. It has rose gold trim and it doesn't look really that nice right now. There is two cut out hearts from the, um, here from the breather hole in here. Sometimes I can see them right now. I can't. Um, I won this pen with a medium nib but I had already owned a medium nib size pen. So I asked around if somebody was out there who would love to use a medium nib and would be willing and had a maybe fine broad nib um, platinum 3776 century. And my friend Chelsea uh, happened to have this um, black rhodium trimmed broad nib. And I'm really glad we were able to swap. She since had her medium pen, medium nibbed pen, custom ground. And I'm actually thinking currently of doing the exact same thing and maybe getting another reverse architect grind on this pen. But since I'm on a no spend until the end of the year, 
this will have to wait and I will get to experiment with this pen a little bit more. I do now have quite the few inks that are fairly wet that could use dry writers, which these two are. I find that besides having very stiff gold nibs, which is not a bad thing, these also are very finicky pens that uh, only work with certain inks. And I have had good experience with inks that are fairly wet. That is all the pens that I currently own and that I plan on keeping. Now I'm just quickly going to show you the pens that I don't plan on keeping in my collection. Um, these are all quite the affordable pens and I'm not really sure it would make sense to sell them. But then on the other hand, if you, if you can get a pen that usually costs 30 for 20, um, maybe that's something that is of interest for someone. So I shouldn't dismiss the idea of selling the affordable pens as well. This one is a Twisby Swipe with a medium nib in the petrol blue, dark petrol something, dark blue, Prussian blue uh, colorway. I uh, replaced the cap and it is now almost as new. It still has all of the converters that come with it. I, I keep all the original packaging for all of the pens that I purchase if there is one. Then I also have the Benu, uh, not, not Benu, Twisby Go. This one has a broad nib, I think. No, that's a medium nib that I'm going to let go. I have a uh, Pilot Metropolitan Retro Prop Red with a calligraphy medium nib. And then these two Jin Hao's. This one is the Jin Hao X159 with a fine nib. And then lastly, this was an experiment. Uh, this one is, I think, the Jin Hao. Well, I know it's the Jin Hao X750, but I don't know if it's Cosmos or something. It has these, it looks really stunning. It's quite heavy. And I swapped out the nib for a Nemesine uh, 0.6 stub nib that I might give another chance, but uh, it's very likely that I will get, I will de-stash this sometime soon. So these are all my pens. I am really excited to have most of them in my, in my stash, in my collection. I, I remember talking about, be, am I a collector? Am I a um, user? Even though I have really uh, increased my pen, pen, pen number in the past, in 2023, I do still count myself as a user. I love experimenting with those pens. I love comparing, filling different the same ink into different pens, seeing how, how the, the pens behave. Um, and that's what's most fun for me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know which your favorite pen was. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Most of my pens are from Atlas Stationers. Mo some of them were gifts. Goulet, Franklin Christoph, Schoen Design. This one was bought. These ones were bought from Atlas. Let's not talk about this. Flax pen to paper. Um, Lemur Ink is another good brand a seller to buy from. And if you were looking for used pens, I can highly recommend the Virtual Pen Show. This is where I got this one, as well as the uh, spare journaler nib and yeah I don't remember oh endless pens 
This one is where I got this one and this one is from Atlas as well. Um, my Esther Brooks, the Scarlet and Honeycomb I purchased from Vanessa and Atlas and Vanessa are the two pen stores that I would highly, highly recommend. Amazing, outstanding customer service. And that's all, I think. Thank you so much for sticking with me for such a long time. I knew I wouldn't be able to cut this short. Um, I'm excited for 2024 and what is going to happen. Right now, I'm feeling like I am going to slow down. I have my eyeballs fixed on some more expensive pens that will take a while to save up for. Okay, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you soon. Until then, goodbye.